Gary, good to see you again. Welcome to episode three of Locker Room Banter. It's good to have you along as a guest. All well? All good, Ori. Yeah, all good. Good to see you, mate. Yeah, good stuff. It's been a while. Uh, Gary, we're going to um, chat over your career more extensively at Inverness Cali Thistle as we look ahead to a big, a big event this week, uh, the Iron Brew Cup Final. You'll be leading the boys out against Dumbarton, so we'll look ahead to that. We'll take you right back to um, the very start, actually. Bristol, born a proud Bristolian. Um, you started your career out. Um, Team Bath, you played along with uh, Team Bath. Um, then you went on to Newport County. But you also, um, whilst you were at Team Bath, you were training to be a PE teacher. So whilst you know, you're playing your football, you, your career took a different direction. Um, what was Mr. Warren like as a, a PE teacher? Uh, quite quite easy going, to be honest, Aldi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quite relaxed. Uh, give the ball to the kids and just say, off you go and play. Uh, it's as simple as that. That's, uh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't like that, to be honest, mate. It was... My training was was uh, quite tough to be honest. Um, I had to to go and qualify and get get me GCSE maths, and that took me about five attempts to get that. I got five E's um, before I could even think about teaching. So I was in night school trying to get me GCSE maths, um, and then eventually I got it, um, and then I had a, a course for a year um, training to be a teacher. Um, and obviously, when when you're thinking about playing your football and thinking about your teaching, you you don't know which which route you're going to go down. Um, at the time, I thought um, my teaching would be sort of used for for a backup because um, I still wanted to concentrate on my football. Still wanted to to go and play um, professionally if I could. I was quite quite old. I think at 25, 26 before I before I got the opportunity to go and play pro. Um, so I, I used it really as a as a backup. Um, but I enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It was for me. I, I enjoy enjoy working with with the kids, working with the the youth um, of today. Um, and it, it was yeah, it was good, a good experience for me to be honest. And it's it's something now that I've got for for when I finish football and something to to look back on. Is it primary school, high school kids? Yeah, high school, secondary high school? school kids. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So some of the kids. It was when I I first started doing like. Um, teaching assistant job and it was in in sort of inner city Bristol so it's quite a tough school um, getting told to to F off every day uh, getting told you're um, well yeah quite quite a lot of a uh, lot of home truths to be honest probably most of it's probably true as well <laughs> so um, but it's, it was good experience for me that that I think that allowed me then to go out into to other schools and to to learn how to, to teach in a different kind of style and different different methods um, but I, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and like I said, it's, it's something now that, that I think about um, for for when I've finished finished playing. Team Bath, as you said, you were you were you initially applied to you know become a PE teacher through uh, Team Bath, who were associated with University of Bath. Um, they folded. You moved on to Newport County, the Blue Square Premier League as well, uh, playing for um, the Welsh side. Good good fond memories of your time at Newport. Yeah, great times, great times down there. Um, I, th- I think I had three, three years. Uh, the first year done very well, won the league, got promoted. The second year had an, another good season um, in the conference uh, Premier Oak. Just just missed out on a on a playoff spot, but we had, had a good season really. Um, the third year was was frustrating, um, but I think the, th- the third year it was a, a big sort of transformation in the club, um, and and that was a time really for me for me to move on, but. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed my time down there. Um, worked with a lot, of, a lot of good people, and and it's good to see now how, how well they've done. Um, Michael Flynn has, has taken over from them. As like I said, this year they've they've gone on to an unbelievable cut run, um, and they've they've gone on from sort of strength to strength really since I've left. So and that probably says it all, really, mate. So get, <laughs> rid, of, get rid of the dead wood and not at all, guys. Uh, Steve Marcella, uh, the, the man at the time at Inverness Cali Thistle, he was the he was picking out these gems from the lower leagues in England um, I'm sure he obviously reported to Terry Butcher at the time that listen there's a, a centre half playing for Newport we need to go and sign Terry Butcher uh, did that and, and brought you up to, to Inverness uh, at the time when that call came through you know listen there's a chance of moving from uh, Wales uh, Newport and Wales all the way up to, to Inverness and the Highlands uh, what was your reactions at the time that that, that call came through? 
I, first of all, I didn't even know where Inverness was. I, I'd never even heard of Inverness, to be honest with you. Uh, and the first thing I had to do was, was to look it up on the map. And Google it? Yeah, Google it and, and to look how far away it was. I thought, geez, this is, this is going to be some trek, this. Um, having to travel and then, then you, of course, you type in how, how long it takes in a car to drive up there and you see 10 hours and you think, wow, this is, uh, this is like I'm going to play over in bloody Spain rather than, than being over here. What, what am I doing? Um, but then you think oh, it's, it's, it's a Scottish Premier League it's, it's a chance it's an opportunity for you to go in go and play professional football I, I call it proper professional football mm-hmm. although in Newport I was, I was full time I was still I was still playing in the conference so I wasn't I didn't sort of classify that as, as being a pro so, so Terry really and, and Steve I think Steve spoke to Terry and came to watch me in we had a final FA Trophy final in the last year at, at Newport and I think they were there watching then um, and that's that's when I got the call after that. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I, I didn't I didn't read. Really, I looked at obviously where the where where Inverness was, but I didn't didn't even think twice to be honest. I made me mind up straight away as soon as that call came in. That was that was for me. I was to play in the in the top flight of, of Scottish football. Um, someone just coming out of playing conference football. That was that was really sort of for me. I, I was like well, taken back a little bit, you know. Um, and then, but but like I said, travelling up here, that's that's irrelevant. That's, when you get up here, you see how, how beautiful the part of the world is and how good it is to be up here. Yep. It's, it, it's only, like I said, it's only, only an hour flight for, for me back into Bristol. So that's not a problem in, in 10 hours nowadays. It's, it's not so much of a problem. We spoke to, to Ravs last time about when he moved and made, uh, made the move up the same summer as yourself as well. Terry Butcher, I mean, he's obviously uh, someone that's that's going to command that respect. Um, an aspect uh, an aspect in your move to, to Inverness, Terry being here? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. He was, obviously, when I when I first sort of grew up watching watching football, the, the 1990 World Cup was probably my first real memories of, of England and, um, and of all the big sort of stars that were playing. And obviously, you look at Terry Butcher and you look at the Paul Gascoigne's Gary Lineker's that kind of era um, and and me being a defender as well it, it sort of fitted perfectly to be honest um, and and he was brilliant when when I come up here um, he, he, I've got no no bad words to say about, about Terry Morris Steve because these guys were the, the guys that gave me my opportunity to play professional football mm-hmm. and gave me my first contract Um in terms of the way Terry used to, he, he was spot on with everything is in, in terms of man management um, and in terms of, of how, how the team played. I know a lot of people will probably say, oh, you bloody hell, you're a bit sort of big bruisers, direct. Um, we had some, some really good technical footballers as well as sort of those type of players as well. Um, and I think it was, it was proven really with, with the, the success we had under Terry. Mm-hmm. A year and a half that you worked under him. Um, like you say, he's a great character. Um, everyone's got a, a Terry Butcher story. Um, I mean, I, I dealt with him after match and, and before games, and you know, he's a great, great guy to, to come across. And I've got some stories of my own, but but you obviously working with him on a more uh, a, a closer level. Um, any good memories of of Big Tail? Uh, I think I think one that it stands out probably quite recently when he. When he left and went to Hibs, okay. Um, at the time, it was I think it was me, Carlo, Ravs, Drapes that were that were still here, um, and obviously Terry went to Hibs, and just before that, Owen Tudor Jones was at Hibs as well. Yep. And uh, we we were due to play Hibs, I think a couple of weeks or f- sort of a month after after he joined Hibs. Yep. And of course, Terry, what he used to do is you every this is Inverness. Every time we used to play a team, the, the day before or a couple of days before, he used to get on the on the whiteboard, and he used to put the team out opposition, and he used to go through them. But the, he would never really like comment on their sort of technical ability. You know, it, it would be right midfielder. We've got a central midfielder. He's bold, or we've got uh, they've got centre forward. He's ginger. You'd be thinking like. Gaffer, this is not really like this is not helping us here. Well, I don't understand. So anyway, Jones, he's uh, he's rung me up the night before. He said, oh, "We've had a great meeting about you boys." So he's, oh, I said, "Come on then, what's he what's he said about us?" He said, "Well, I'll start off. Josh Meekins, 
can't really pick a fault in Josh Lads. Uh, he's a he's a good player, good centre half, uh, left back Carl Tremarco. Um, they call him the bowling boy. He'll tackle his grandmother, and then he moves on to the right hand side. He went Gary Warren, the right hand side centre half, slow, really slow, and then uh, and he went Ravs, even slower. <laughs> target their right hand side. Their right hand side is the weakness. And I was sat there thinking, I can't believe he just he just signed me. He signed me and Ravs, and now he's hammering us. So then me and Ravs, we had to. We, I think it was a maybe two or three weeks later. I said, Ravs, I'm definitely faster than you. And of course, Ravs is like, I cannot believe he said I'm slower than you. So I said, right. After a few beers, we're in a hotel. I said, come on, Ravs, race. So me and Ravs are steaming, and we're upstairs on the landing. I said, come on then, on your marks, get set. Off we go. So we're racing down the corridor. Next thing, I tripped over. Rav trips over. The the, uh, the bloke from down the stairs obviously hears all the racket. Comes upstairs. Come on, lads, keep it all down. Uh, but that's what it got to. It got to the stage where me and Ravs were probably racing every other week because we wanted to fight. See, who was the quickest. But it's safe to say I'm I'm a lot faster than Ravs. Right. So you won. Yeah. That you can yeah. see that. Yeah, on yeah, that's fine. I'm sure. I'm sure Ravs will. Yeah, he was close. David was close. He's Aye. but obviously he's he's a little bit older now. He's they he say he's. 32, 33, but you look at the state of it. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, uh, who would, who would, you, would you say, if, if you're looking at me and Ravs, you would definitely say Ravs has looked older, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But listen, as a guy that looks a lot older than he is, ah. I mean, I'm, I'm 25. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, can, I know where he's coming from. Mm. I do, I know. Uh, Terry Butcher, as you say, that first season, I mean, you're right, you're right when you said there about, you know, it was a, a big physical side, but but actually there were some great players in that team. Mm. Um, the Shinnies, um Greg Tansy's a bit earlier, but he he was in and around you know that team later on, yeah. but some fantastically talented Billy McKay you know scoring the goals. Um, that season was a successful season too. You know it was a really good uh, semi finals you got to in the in the League Cup, um, almost qualifying for Europe and the kind of dream debut season for you. Oh, that's what I mean. Or it was it was brilliant in in the fact that you had you had a great mix of of all types of players in there. You know you had you had Jonesy, you had Drapes who would. It would just go. It, it used to call them two the great. Well, Terry used to call them the Great Wall of China, mm-hmm. and you can see why, because um, it just used to run through people. Um, no technical ability at all. Both awful on the ball, but but could run through people. Um, and I was probably part of that in that bracket as well, to be honest with you. Um, but then you'd, you'd have, like you say, you'd have Graham Shinney run all day. Technically very good, could play anywhere. And his brother, technically unbelievable, who kicked on again. Yep. Um, and, and Billy, Billy, to be honest with you, one of the best centre forwards I've played with in terms of his, his goal scoring now. Um, so we had a real, and Aaron, I forget Aaron Doran, and obviously Az has had a lot of a lot of injuries over the past two years, but but for me personally, Az is, is up there with one of the best players I've played with. Um, just, I I see him day in, day out. Um, and I know what he's he's capable of and I know, know how good he is on the ball. And, and for him, Obviously, the last couple of years have been frustrating, but I'm just hoping he'll get back to mm-hmm. to where he was at. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we we had a great season, mate. Like you, like you say, your first season coming up here, um, finishing in the top six, where the club never really achieved that. Um, just outside a, a European spot, uh, you couldn't obviously trying to a European spot would have capped it all. Um, but then the cut run as well. We had a good cut run, getting to the semi final, getting beat by Hearts, your teammate. Um, but it was a, a a fantastic first season um, and a season where I think when you, you come from like sort of so far away and to new sort of settings um, you kind of think well you know how's this how's this going to work out um, and I remember the, the first season the first few games I think six or seven games it, it we, we didn't start very well and you, of course you think to yourself right yeah is he, does he does he rate me the manager? That's mm-hmm. that's what I found to be honest with, with Terry. I never I never ever understood. Uh, never, not understood, never really found out whether whether he rated me or whether he liked me or not. But well, I thought was, you were slow. He, well, yeah, <laughs> did, he, you're right. He thought I was crap to be honest. But no, nah, he, but he, you know, he he never ever told me in in a way yep. which which was good because it always kept me on my toes. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was I was thinking right, I need to prove him right every week. I'm not sure if he was happy with that performance, so I'll go out next week and and try and prove him. Not prove him wrong, but try and try and be as, as good as I could be. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and that's that's why I think his his man management was was very good, um, and that's that's why we were such a such a success that year. Like I said, we had we had some good boys and a, and a great team spirit as well. Big moment for you scoring, I think the second in a three 0 win at Ibrox in the League Cup or en route to the you know, semi finals against Hearts, but. You know, for for yourself, moving in the summer to then going and playing at a place like Ibrox in front of it was a good crowd that night. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it was the fifty thousand, but there was at least forty thousand there. You know, good crowd, scoring a goal in front of uh, in front of the Rangers supporters as well. A big moment for you. Yeah, massive moment. Um, I think when you first you first come up to Scotland, you look obviously Rangers weren't in the in the league that year, but you look for the the big ties and the big games um, and when you're going to be coming up against your Celtics your Aberdeens Hearts um, and when you're going to go and play at those those kind of venues and those crowds and, and look to see how really you you adjust to, to dealing with that that kind mm-hmm. of environment um, and obviously to score um, to score in, a, in such a, a big game against a, such a, a big club in front of those fans was, was yeah it's probably one of the best the best moments of, of my career um, not only did we win the game, but I think it put us through then to the to the next round, the the cup, which was semi-finals. Um, so it was a big a big carrot really. Um, and then, like I say, you you go and play and look towards other games like the Celtics, Aberdeen's, um, and, and play against those type of teams. Um, but it was it was a great, like I say, it was a great season. Um, and, and to be honest, mate, since since I've been up here, it's it's been a, it's been a good sort of six. It's been six years. It's mm-hmm. been a good six years for me. Terry left that summer, well, no, sorry, not that summer, a few months into that season, uh, to join the Hibs. Um, John Hughes arrived from one character to another character. Now, obviously, again, um, Yogi's quite, you know, quite the guy. He's um, a lively guy. Um, worked alongside him as well, and he's he's, he's a great, great, great guy. Um, fond memories of, of working under under Yogi. Um, but first of all, your thoughts on when he when he when he came into the club. Yeah, well, first of all, when he came into the club, I think we were, because we were flying at the time. <laughs> obviously, under Terry, we were, I think we were third, fourth, and he obviously decided to leave. So then you, you get like a change, a change of manager. And you, you know what it's like, wherever, wherever you are, when you're doing well, you think, oh, what's going to happen now? Um, what, you know, what's, what's the new manager going to bring? What's his, what's his new ideas? Um, and, and as a player, you, you think, right, okay. For, for me, anyway, I, I think right. It's another man that I need to impress. I need to. I need to now. It's, it's kind of like a, a fresh slate. Although you, you you might be third or fourth in the league, it doesn't doesn't mean anything. I mean, you've got someone new coming in um, who, who's got new ideas, new philosophies, and has a, a new and different way of thinking. So he, for me, I was thinking right. Same again. Is this guy gonna gonna rate me as as a player? Will he rate me? Will he still want me? Um, to play the way that, that we've been playing, um, so it was all, all about really impressing, impressing him when, when he first walked through the door again. Um, but I like, I like doing that to be honest. I like I like the I kind of think of it as a as a test. You know, I think you know, right someone else to impress, someone else to, to try and think. Oh, right, Gaz, he's, he's not a bad footballer. He's uh, he's okay. We'll keep him here. Um, he can do a job for us. So for me, that was that was my first first real thoughts of, of having. Uh, Yogi and the new manager, mm-hmm. um, and and obviously then when he when he first come in, um, he, he, he was on, this, for me in terms of coaching, in terms of the way he, he managed me, um, is up there with the best best coaches I've, I've ever had. Um, for me personally, going I, I grew up on in in a non-league where everything was was. Head it, kick it, head it, kick it, and then the last sort of 10, 15 minutes you you'll play. You know. Um, I think, yeah, I think for, I think for me, mate, it was like I say, growing up down in non-league, head it, kick it, head it, kick it, uh, and that's all I was ever taught really. Um, even even when I first came up here with Terry, it was more about not just head it, kick it, but, but put the balls into an area rather than, than looking for for different passes and looking for. For different options on the field. When when Yogi came, I remember it was it was very very clever how he how he worked it because he joined halfway through the season um, and he had he told the boys he said look lads you've got from now to the end of the season just carry on doing what you're doing. I'm not going to change anything. You're you're all you're playing brilliant. Uh, don't change anything. But it was 
it was clever how he, he drip fed little little bits of information to you, you know. And then he had a whole of pre season, the following season, to work with us on the way and the style of, of, of play, the style of football he wanted to play. Um, and for me, he, he used to come and say, he used to speak to me and say, guys, look, these are three or four passes. And he used to give me three or four passes, three options, do this, work on this, day in, day out, and you'll become a better player. And it's not only that, the way he, the way he was on the, the training field, the way he coached the lads, his, what say, his enthusiasm for the game, um, and just his, his, whole, his, his whole character, his demeanour, um, it, it had just a natural sort of rub off on, on the rest of the lads. And, and that's, that's obviously proven um, in, in the results and uh, the best ever that, that Cali Thistle ever, ever achieved. Um, it's a shame because, because the way he, I felt the way, the way he left the club here, he was, he was given a hard time. Um, and I, for me, he, he done nothing but, but sort of good for me and, and, and brought me on and managed to, to, to make me a, a much, much better footballer, an all-rounded -round, footballer. Um, the way he wanted me to play and to adapt my game, to change my game into more of a pass in, in sort of football in centre half rather than just a, a big header and kicker. Um, so he, yeah, he got a little bit of bad press when he left because I think Yogi all he wanted was the best and all he wanted was was to take the club on and to to keep the club on to to make it even better. And you can't go wrong with with someone that wants to make things better. Um, and it was a shame for me because. Because I just signed, I think when he when he left, I just signed. I think a couple of months before, and it was a shame. And he was a he was a massive part in me in me signing that that sort of length length of contract. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously when he left, I was I was gutted to be honest because like I said he he brought out the best in me, and I know he brought out the best in in, in nearly every single one of the players that he had here. Um, so yeah, that was that was. Great time with him, and like you said, going on to win the Scottish Cup and, and playing in Europe and being able to, to lead the boys out in Europe um, is, is something now that I'll, I'll look back on for when I finish and, and say I've, I've played in Europe. Yogi, like you're saying, they're another great man manager um, and a great character of Scottish football. I mean, everyone in Scottish football knows Yogi, what, you know, what he was like as a player, but he's, a, he's first and foremost a fantastic guy. And as I say, I worked with him for, for, the, for his time here. And, I'll always have memories of, of Yogi yourself. Any standout kind of moments that, that will always, when someone says Yogi, the first thing that springs to your mind? Oh, with, with Yogi, it was something every day. Every day we had something, and he used to he used to pick on Marley. Marley used to get it every day. I think every every one of the lads used to get it. I think it was more of a probably more of a, a team collection thing. But but Yogi was always at the at the fore of it. Was we had a bet with with Kel, the coach at the start of the year. Kel said, look lads, yeah, you, know, you won't get into Europe. And if you, if you lads get into Europe, I guarantee you I'll wear this mankini out on a match day. So he said, no chance. He said, you won't do it. I said, right, okay. So it's, this, was, this was just probably about September time. I said, they got to Christmas. I'm thinking, oh, boys are really doing quite well here, you know, in the top six. Then they got to, to January. Boys are gone to fourth, third. And then you think in February, you're thinking, oh dear, so the lads haven't moved out of the top three now for, for the last two two months. You're thinking, you know, <laughs> and it gets a couple of months before the end of the season, the, the last last six, and then we're we're literally, literally in touching distance of getting the top three. So then that's it. All the boys are on right, Cal. I do realise, mate? Remember that bet? He was like, nah, I can't. I can't remember anything. I can't remember anything. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, managed to get into the top. Top three, finished third. And I uh, said, you, you need to wear this out on the last game of the season. That was the bet. Uh, he was, you see Ken Kel's face, he's sweating, he's panicking, he's thinking, oh God, I can't do this. I've got my whole family here, I've got my kids coming to watch, I'm going to have to walk out with just a mankini on. Anyway, he's, he's got to speak. he spoke to the chairman, and the chairman said, look, you can't do that. It's bloody ridiculous. You're walking out, it's meant to be a professional football club. We've got you leading the boys out in a mankini. <laughs> so he said, no, right, okay, wear it in, in training. So Kel wore it for a couple of days in training. Uh, we've, we've tried one session towards the end of the season. He's put it on, fair play to him, got it on. Training's finished. Uh, Yogi, they usually, the coaches usually drive down to the, to the training field. Anyway, Yogi's he's looking at Cal as he's driving off. See you later, Cal. 
Kelsey and Gil, how am I going to get back? So anyway, isn't that all right? Look, Kel, come on, we'll get you on the bus. So now all, all I hear in the back is, uh, Gaz, drive to town. Drive to town, we'll drop Kel out in the middle of town in his mankini. So right, like, okay. So, uh, we pull out, we're training at Charleston in school at the time. Usually we come out of the road and turn right. So I've come up, turn left. Kel's, Gaz, are you good? Just going into town, Kel. He said, no, no, you're not, you're not. Yeah, we're dropping you off in the middle of town, outside the Eastgate Centre. So I'm doing 30 mile down the road. Next thing, the door slides open. Kel jumps out the door, still manages to keep his feet. He's running, his little toes are going like this. It's like Fred Flintstone. Fred are on the road. Anyway, he, he managed to run. So then he got towards the canal. Uh, he, no one's going to pick him up. Or so he's ran back to the training ground to, to try and catch the, the other minibus with the U team boys. But he's, he's running down the road in his mankini on, like cars waving at him, beeping at him. Um, so that was probably one of the funny, funny moments we had that year. Uh, but like I said, there was there was so many every day. Every day something something new with him. Talk, talking of Kelly, look good at his mankini with his new uh, new look. Scott oh, Kelly, he's, he's look good at that mankini. Oh, he's there, right. he's, he's uh, looking very sharp at the moment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, guys, the the the, the run to the the. Two cup finals under Yogi, obviously on a, on a kind of sad note, you, you were unable to, to take part. But I think that, um, I mean, first of all, the, the red card in the, in the semi final against Hearts was disappointing, but you, you played your part, more than played your part in the semi final against Celtic. You got a booking, I can't remember if it was second half, first half, but you got a booking, which meant you were ruled out for the cup final. That's gone through your mind that you're ruled out for the cup final, I'm not sure if it was, but, um, but it played in your, in your mind. but. But you still gave your all, you still, you know, as if it was your final, you know, that, that semi-final against Celtic, you pick up a yellow card in your head, you're kind of going, right, I'm out of the final, but, but you keep going. Yeah, I think I, I kind of learned, learned from the, the year before, really, the Hearts game. Um, I was char charging around like a, a bull in a Chinese shop on a yellow card and then ended up getting sent off. So I kind of learned my lesson from that. Um, I think it was James Forrest, I think, the first, first half. Um, yeah, he's, he's he's broke away with with a ball and, and and got through. I thought to myself, right, he's he's one on one with with Vess. I thought, oh, listen, uh, nine times out of ten, you're one on one, you're, you're going to score. So I thought, and he's he's a lot quicker than me. Let's be honest. He's if, if it was Ravs, he would have been away by by halfway, you know. So <laughs> at least I, I try to keep up with him. Um, but anyway, I brought him down. Um, and, yeah, I saw the yellow card. I knew, knew from that moment straight away. I knew I was I was missing the final. Um, but to be honest with you, it didn't really go through my mind. Uh, I just thought, look, this that that occasion for me was was the final. Um, uh, you're playing Celtic. You're not going to get a better side than Celtic. So if we beat Celtic, then the likelihood is because because of the quality we had, uh, I knew the likelihood we we're going to go on and win the cup. Yeah. Um, and that. That happened. I brought him down, and I thought, right, I've got away with this. Anyway, next, stand up, stand in a wall. Next thing, big Virgil Van Dyke's bent in the top corner. You think, oh my god, thanks a lot. It's just, that's absolutely ruining now. I thought I might as well just let him run through. Um, but so he's obviously there, he scored, um, and you're thinking, I think that was one, one nil down. And you think, right, we're up against it now. Um, and I just knew from then, knew from then, I, I, and going on to win that game, that the boys would would go on. Obviously, it's when you get to a final, you, of course you want to play, but it's nothing you can do, mate. It's, it's taking out your hands, taking out your hands. Um, yeah, I was there, just cheering on the boys, drinking. That's that's, that's good for me, mate. Uh, the, only, the only disappointing thing was probably not getting a medal, but yep. I was there with the lads, and yep. that was that's enough for me. Celebrations after the semi final were special. Celebrations after the final were even. Yeah, well, even better. Um, you know, stuff that you'll remember for the rest of your days. Yeah, it's, listen, it's, it's something that, that I think that the memories that, that you have from those those days and those occasions will will live with you forever. And that's that's really why you play the game because of those 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 little moments that you think it's a, it's a career, it's a short lived career of football. And and if if you can get if you can get one of those occasions, then then you're lucky. I've been fortunate because I've had I've had a few where you you're winning sort of trophies and winning leagues. And I've been fortunate enough to, to, to experience that. Um, and it's, it's it's pleasing when you, you see guys that, that you train with and you work with day in, day out, go on um, and, and 
be rewarded for the, the success and the hard work they, they put in over the years. Um, and it's, it's good as well now that you see so many of these guys. Uh, if, if you look at that side, I probably count at least nine. Nine boys that have, that have gone on to bigger, better, brighter things. Martin uh, Watkins just got called into the, the Bills score now. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, so it's, it's real, real pleasing to see those guys kick on and, and move on. Talking of Cup Finals, we've got one to look forward to uh, on the 24th of March against Dumbarton, the Iron Brew Cup Final. For yourself, on a personal note, obviously uh, you mentioned earlier about leading the team into their, uh, into their first European game, but leading the, the side of a Cup Final will be a proud moment for you. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. It's getting to the to the time now where, like I said, these these moments don't happen very often, um, and and now it's, this is coming towards the end of my career. Probably it's it's a it's a, another sort of icing on the cake really for me um, to be able to lead the boys out and to lead the team out. Um, obviously, I've done it. I've done it in Europe, um, but this is now we're playing for for another cut, another honour. Um, and the six years I've been here. Like I said, it's been a been a, a real sort of enjoyable, memorable time. Um, we've achieved a, loads, to be honest with you, over those six years, um, and it'll be nice, nice this year, if, or this this weekend, if we can if we can go on and, and add another bit of silverware to to the collection. Dumbarton are the opponents. It's going to be an interesting game, but you've got a good cup run, um, and then again, the ability is in the squad there to to go and win that trophy. Yeah, without a doubt. If if we turn up on the day. Um, and play at our best, then then we should win the game. Um, but we have to make sure that we do that. We have to make sure that we turn up and everyone is is at their best. Because uh, you know what it's like. The cup final is uh, it's anyone's anyone's trophy. It's, you can't go into the to the comp, into that that stage and, and say someone's the favourites because I, I don't believe that you're your favourites in the final. Um, so they'll they'll be thinking exactly the same. If they're at the best, they'll think they've got a chance. But if we were at our best and we our quality as our, our side and our squad should should prevail, yeah. Guys, all the best for the final. Thank you Cheers. for your time. We look forward to the Iron Brew Cup final against Dumbarton. We hope that you can bring a trophy back up the A9 with you. And we look forward to Warren versus Raven in the Olympic final in 2020. Gary, thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers.